You're going out? Yeah. All right. See, look at that. We're going out. I have 22 to 28 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, since I started doing the Tuesday Night Lives, uh, if you're not familiar, we go live every Tuesday, shade after nine. If you're subscribed and your bell's rung, you'll see it. But you probably want to shoot to join us live because most of the time they get blocked. Um, Blackberry Smoke has been an absolute staple, as every week someone does Blackberry Smoke. And so I just went on my comments here, and I just said, how, hey, how many people have requested Blackberry Smoke over the past year? Looks like 978. Uh, here's an example. Reed Pemberton says, uh, Charlie Starr of Blackberry Smoke is one of the most underrated songwriters and guitarists that's around today. And I write back, oh, that's coming for sure. And without a doubt, the most requested one is Ain't Much Left of Me from Southern Ground Studios Acoustic. Now, I've heard this before. And I've learned the basic chords before because we did it on a Tuesday Night Live. That's kind of how it works. Everybody gets two minutes or so, uh, depending. You know, I get a choice, dealer's choice, mods get a choice. But for the most part, it's for you guys. And, um, and so we're going to give it a listen. I'm going to show you the broad strokes, kind of what makes the song what it is. And let's jump into it. If you're not familiar with Blackberry Smoke, these guys are fantastic. You know what we're gonna do for you? Oh, I forgot to We're gonna this play minute. you our newest single off of our newest album, The Whippoorwill. It's called Ain't Much Left of Me. It's By the way, look at all the faces. Off of our newest album, The Whippoorwill. Bass player for the win. Bass player for the win. It's called Ain't Much Left of Me. It's a nobody knows you when you're down and out kind of song. You don't have a friend when you don't have a nickel. Uh, David Lee Murphy and I initially wrote it on a couple of acoustic Love that guitars. Clapton tune. And then we took it into rehearsal and turned it into this musical opus. So Britt, what do you think about it? After the late 1900s, we decided to start a band called Blackberry Smoke. Stop it! Stop! Can we start over? <laughs> that was such a scripted but hilarious intro. was a sight to see Good turn to bad and bad turn to misery Found out what it is and what it's not All I ask for a show ain't what I got That's right. Well, I've been ringed on road hard and put up wet Dance with the devil till I'm in dead Took all I got 
All right, let's go over what's happening in this tune. Um, let's go back to the beginning here. Not, not, not the long intro where they talk, but basically, here's what's up. You got Charlie on the guitar in open G. Now again, I've heard this before, right? I've picked, I've picked a little bit up on this, so it's not like I just grab this out of the air. But if you watch what's happening, you'll, you'll, you'll get an idea of, of how they arrange it. You guys know I'm always big on arrangements and how people stack all their different sounds. So Charlie's on open G, and he's playing slide. You have the other guitar player over here who's doing some seriously good harmony playing or singing. Um, he is in standard. Bass player, obviously, in standard. You got the keys in the back, and then you have the drummer literally drumming on a guitar in the back that has like looks like a bunch of strings just kind of tied together. So you're always going to have your basic triad shapes being played uh, on your open G guitar right? Because all of your major triads, that's the point of open G tuning with slides, are going to be achieved uh, with the four, three, and two strings. So G, C, but this will also get you your A minor seven sound, which is in there. D, F, which is in here. G. So that those, those are your basic road maps. And then the other guitar player is playing little pieces of triads and dyads to complement that. So not the same voicing, obviously, on purpose, and that's why he doesn't need to also be in open G. So check it. <laughs> so what that is here is that seven, so that's F, a C to a G. So you got F, C, and G. So this is really like a, a song in, in G7, right? It's about, G is certainly your home base, but it starts on that flat seven, four to your C, one, if you're thinking G is center. But really, all these chords are coming from the key of C major. Now, Yeah, it's a cool thing that's happening in here. That F is kind of like, it's kind of like a floaty F to a C like this to an open G. So like. Then it goes to, that bass walks down from B. It's a cool little push down in there that Charlie's getting because he's in an open, uh, he's got, he's in, in an open tuning. So he's got those little pieces of G walking down from B, right? Right. But the other guitar player isn't getting that because the voicings don't quite work. But the bass gets it and it's a great little walk down. And you see the other guitar player is grabbing the major third and fifth of your first inversion F major triad here. That, so sorry. And then getting that walk down, it sounds like, but doing it here. So you got F, C, G. But that diatonic walk down is your F note, E, so that's your third of C, and then D, which of course is your fifth of G. So you got... That works with... Right, because it all goes together, right? It's wild, it's wild. But it really mixes. Well, my fall from grace was a sight to see
And that's flat 7-4, so G, F, C. And you just, I mean, it's, it's a one flat 7-4. Who doesn't love that? Good turn to bad and bad turn to misery. Put up wet. Love that. So now the harmonies come in and the other guitar player, again, while Charlie goes up and grabs that five D like this. Remember, he's on slide. He's always going to be in that second inversion, fifth root, third slide shape to get his triads. You have the other guitar player doing the open up here. So you always get those different stacks of sound and that's how it gets so full. Your keys are in the middle and your bass is obviously behind it. Dance with the devil till I'm in Took all I got It ain't much left of me Well, I'm getting right here I love how it they they go to that intro again, but it's just half the length and right into the second verse. You're just cutting out all the fat. It's great. It's great songwriting, great arrangement, and uh, I just love his whole vibe in general. Um, I, I just love how it comes out. You're doing that A minor seven, which of course is the C major triad over A. So you know Charlie can do. You see him doing it like this, but you can also on slide achieve that over here as long as your bass is like that, right? And that's your basic thing. You have G, you have C, you have D, so it's a 1, 4, 5, and G, but then it also has that flat 7 and the A minor 7, right? So the F is kind of what is, is what's squirrely, so it's kind of like during during the verses, right? That, 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 uh, You're in G mixo, but then when it goes to the chorus and you finally get yourself a true five, you get that D major, you're back into G Ionian. So the story of the tune, right, is about now we're now G7 is the focus, now G major is the focus. Now G mixolydian is the focus, right? G with an F in it. And now when we finally need a five chord, we need an F sharp, which is the major third of D, your five chord, then we're in the key of G. That's it, and the melody just connects those basic movements. That's what you're getting here, just pulled off really, really, really well, and just, again, stacked musically really purposefully. It's very, very clean. You'd be surprised at how old a man can get. I watched all them dreams slip through my So what you got there during the solo section is just F to G. So again, G mixo. But what is he doing? He's literally just taking the slide up to 12th position to get this G major triad, right, on the four, three, and two strings. 
root, a fifth root major third, so second inversion. And he's just teasing, you know, that, again, I don't really play slide well, I don't have one on my hand, but he's teasing on the second string all those kind of major and minor thirds, because that's where the thirds are, to give it that bluesy sound. And then he's going back two frets to the F major triad and applying all the same shake, shapes and licks. So that's what you would do, even if you weren't playing slide, you'd say, this is G for a moment, right, you know? You know, there's F for a moment. And so on and so forth. That wasn't the cleanest thing in the world, but you can see I'm thinking G, F, G, F. That's it. Well, Comes out on a five here. Well, my fall from grace was a sight to see. Ain't nobody even cared what became of me. One thing that really stood out there at the end, and again, guys, I'm trying not to start and stop this much. If I was learning this tune, I'd spend a lot more time on it, um, even though it's deceivingly simple. But the bass player, the bass player really, really uh, got my attention there at the end. One of my favorite kinds of just bass players, just big, round, you know, not a guitar player playing bass. That dude is... The dude is a bass player, right? And he's got little, little tiny, little poking around runs in there. But at the end, he starts really pushing through. But it's not flashy. It's just like when you save it that long, it just really adds a lot of girth and movement. Like he's sliding into the... I don't remember exactly the licks he was doing. But he's definitely sliding in from F to G and doing this little five, six, one. Let's just go back and li listen to it again. When he starts, when he starts pushing around after after the three part harmony, which was awesome. Well, there ain't much left to me, baby. Yeah, well, there ain't much left to me. Oh, I said there ain't much left to me now. Yeah, I mean, he, it's... I said there ain't much left to me now Yeah, well, there ain't much left to me, oh, yeah Yeah, you know, I know it seems simple And anybody out there that's watching that's a bass player and just be like, yeah, that's just Michael, that's just basic 
major pentatonic little runs. And you can't downplay purposeful simplicity uh, because you're totally missing the forest for the trees. When you have a song that, let me put it this way. I'll put it this way. I forget who told me this, but I, I wholeheartedly subscribe to the idea that if you, if you, if you, if you can't do it with just a guitar, a voice, or a piano and a voice, if you can't just do it, then you don't have a song. You don't have a hook. You don't have a melody. You don't, if, if it's, if it's not a hit stripped down, it's not a hit, right? I'm one of those people. I realize that there are exceptions and, and studio masterpieces, but at the end of the day, if we're talking about songs, it's true. It's true. So when you are in a band like this, with a simple melody and progression like this, accentuating what makes what's great about the simplicity is what makes you a high-level musician in this type of thing. That's what gets you gigs, keeps you hired, you know, makes your stuff stay on the studio record. You know, that that's it. If you can make the simplicity, like the fundamentals of the tune, if you can bring those to life, it's not a simple pentatonic scale. It's not a, it's not a simple, you know, G major run. It's not just F to F to G like what I was talking about before. It's it's it, it is that, but it's so much more than that, right? And the people that really do this simple stuff well know that. And they don't and they don't shoot off a bunch of licks. They don't do flashy stuff too soon. You know, they don't they, they don't let it rip before they should. You know what I mean? They serve the song. And I just love bass players like that that just sit and sit and sit and you don't even you don't even think about what they're doing because they're doing exactly what they should be doing. And then when they start introducing things, just little things like that, especially with that big round sound, not like a sharp slappy tone, it really elevates the tune when it needs to be elevated. Restraint is a big deal. Leaving space and allowing the tune to breathe and and uh, and let the listener listen to the lyrics is extremely important. And this band does it in spades. I'm a big fan of the tune. I'm a big fan of the band. Um, love the arrangements. Love the simplicity. And it's just, it's just killer musicianship on display with great songwriting. What else can I say? That's Blackberry Smoke. Thank you so much, all 986 of you. I, I'm, I'm correct that recommended this band. Thank you all for joining me on Tuesday nights. Thanks for liking, subscribing so you get all my notifications, and leaving links in the comments. Yes, I read them, and I respond to a lot of them. And also, if you want to support this channel, or if you're looking for just a, you know, a killer community that inspires you and motivates you to pick this up every day and get better, I hope you'll continue. I hope you'll consider clicking the first link in the description and joining me over at guitargate.com. You have all my step-by-step -step courses and lessons. I'll teach you how to do everything I talk about in all these videos, and it's only 10 bucks. Oh, and you get reaction request priority. There's a whole page I built for it. That's it. See you soon. Bye-bye.